So here we are with another exciting day when we saw the moon together in the moon challenge. Today we are talking about the day 11. We have a quickly growing gibbous moon in its waxing phase as it is called, glowing with 80% of its face illuminated by sunlight. As promised, we are sharing the day's moon with you. Of course, we also have our friend Anirudh clicking pictures of the moon with the telescope he has. And therefore, we are going to get some more treats of high resolution pictures in today's image. We've just begun the month of May and the first of May is called the May Day. This particular day is something I would like to call as Ray Day. The reason for this is that on this day, we have three prominent ray crater systems visible or shining bright on the moon. We have Tycho, Stervinus and a new crater Copernicus showing its ray system. Now these craters are basically something which look like a sun drawn by kids in their school art. It's like a circle with some rays coming out of it. And so in this episode, we would like to share with you these enigmatic features on the moon's face. Let's head out south first and talk about the craters Tycho and Stevinus. Well, these two are of course craters formed by impact of some rocky body on the moon's face. But the speciality of these is that they are something called a ray crater. You can see Tycho towards the south of the Mare Numbium, which is the sea of clouds. It is a crater that is about 100 kilometers across itself. And you can see it has various ray-like features coming out of it and radiating outward in various directions. Now this is the characteristic of a ray crater. Tycho is one of the most striking examples of a ray crater on the moon. On the eastern side, we have the tiny crater Stevinus, just about 10 kilometers across. It was not even an important crater when we began the moon challenge and had a very small crescent moon showing us much more attractive features there. Over the fortnight, we have seen Stevinus growing brighter and more and more prominent in the east. This is because the sunlight has started reflecting directly off the land around Stevinus. When we have slanting sunlight, we see more of the edges and more of the shadows of these features like craters and mountains on the moon. That's very important to show you the shape of them. However, the brightness of these features is more prominent when the sunlight falls on them directly. This is what is happening in the area of Stevinus. And because of that, we can see that the area around it actually has lunar material that is lighter in color compared to the surroundings. It may seem obvious to you if I tell you that this lighter material is basically stuff which was under the surface of the moon and it got thrown out when something hit this area and formed Stevinus. It would have been something like a big explosion throwing out a lot of dust in all directions. This of course scattered away radially from the center and fell down in what we see as the rays around these kinds of lunar craters. But let me tell you, this was not actually very obvious for the hundreds of years that the moon has been studied. There had been a lot of hypotheses in which people suggested that these bright rays might just be mineral deposits due to water flows, they might be volcanic ash due to eruptions and other such theories. However, what we find obvious now is a result of the study of lunar astronomy and geology over many years. And from these, we realized that rays of these craters are probably the ejecta from the explosions which were caused by the impact which caused the crater itself. There is still some way to go because we don't really understand why only some craters have rays while some other craters very close to the ray craters do not have them. Have a look at Clavius, which is seen here towards the south of Tycho 
with its string of pearls kind of a necklace chain here inside. Well, it does not have rays and this may be related to the geologic period during which these craters were formed. There are other differences between craters like some of them not having any central peaks compared to craters like Moretus which do have some kind of a hill in the center of them. That's why I say we still have to study the moon a lot, not just from the earth but probably also by going there. Now let's shift slightly northwards. In this part of the image, I'll point out to you two new areas or flatlands or seas on the moon. One is Mare Cognitum, the known sea, which happens to be just slightly above the Mare Numbium. To the north of it is the Sea of Islands, the Mare Insularum. This also holds the large and prominent Copernicus crater. This spectacular feature is the other prominent ray crater visible on the moon's face on day 11. To the north of it, the Carpathian Mountains have become visible on this night. These, along with the Apennines and other mountains, form the edge of Mare Imbrium, which was to the north of these. Now, Copernicus is special. If you compare its rays with those of Tycho, for example, they are darker. This crater is also in the midst of a large flat basaltic plain area, which is the Mare Insularum. As it is still close to the terminator on the moon, we will take a better look at it in the following days because then the rays will be better lit. That is when you will also realize the slight darkness of the rays compared to that of Tycho. So let's wait for the next opportunity to discuss this crater better. To the south of Copernicus, you can see two nicely outlined similar sized craters, Reinhold and Landsberg, both named after astronomers and mathematicians. I point to this area because we are at the correct day to kind of figure out where the lunar equator lies. Well, this is the line that divides the moon into two hemispheres. And as you can see, it passes through Landsberg. It even passes through the central bay, the Sinus Medii, which is something like our own Mediterranean Sea. Close to this is a crater that we have talked about earlier, the Mosting Crater. And while pointing at it, if I draw the line perpendicular to the equator, you will actually find out the zero degree longitude and zero degree latitude point of the moon. These selenographic coordinates are useful to people who love doing in-depth studies of the moon surface. This area is also interesting to lunar explorers because the Surveyor 3 spacecraft had landed on the lunar surface at some place close to this. Well, the fun bit is that NASA chose the same site as the landing point for another mission, which was the manned Apollo 12 mission. The second group to land on the moon actually went to the same site where the Survey 3 instruments had been left. They actually brought back some of these to find out what is the effect of weathering due to the harsh sunlight and other conditions on the moon over the years on sensitive instruments. Thus, this was a very unique mission from a very unique landing site. If we move further north of the field of the crater Copernicus, we can still see some of its rays crawling into Mare Imbrium. We know of the Sea of Rains, which is this lovely large circular flat area on the moon. Thus, the ray craters are actually much, much bigger than their actual diameter. Their area of influence spreads much further on the moon than to their edge or periphery. In fact, in this picture, you may notice this lovely line or streak of slightly lighter material across the darker area of the Mare Serena Tatis. This kind of extends up to the northernmost edge of the moon. You know what? This is actually a ray of the Tycho crater. So this 100 kilometer crater actually has its reach up to the other side of the moon. 
In fact, this ray passes by another small ray crater towards the north of the moon. This is the Thales area. And again, a very tiny small crater has become highlighted because of its ray features which are reflecting sunlight in a peculiar way. Did you know that there are 133 ray crater systems all over the moon? Well, they even have their own categories and classification systems. Thales, for example, is part of the Copernican system, which makes it similar to the Copernicus crater. In fact, while reading up, I came to know of a crater on the other side of the moon, which is named Das after Anil Kumar Das, an Indian astronomer. We'll keep talking about such ray systems and even about beautiful crater systems which have sharp edges and no rays like Plato here or about other features which might actually be gigantic old craters filled up with lava flows. This here is Sinus Iridum, the Bay of Rainbows. It is on the border of the giant Mare Imbrium which is the Sea of Rains. That's a very nice theme going on there. We will also talk about the naming system of these features in another episode. There are of course many other interesting features strewn across this landscape here. But to finish off with this image, let me point you to this crater called C. Herschel. It is named after the British astronomer Caroline Herschel. You may know her more famous brother William Herschel. But of course, her claim to fame is being the first lady member of the Royal Astronomical Society. She is also the first woman to discover a comet. It is inspiring to see that her contributions have been noted and she is now immortalized with a crater on the moon named after her. Talking of lady astronomers and rainbows, it is a great coincidence that my friend Preeti, who works at the Subaru telescope in Hawaii, has sent me this breathtaking picture of the day 11 gibbous moon along with a rainbow. This unbelievable picture was clicked by her with her husband. They also together do outreach work in astronomy. This one definitely demands a share as a hashtag moon challenge picture. Preeti, who currently lives in the land of rainbows, told us that they saw this view for hours as the rainbow and the moon rose together in the sky as the sun was setting in the west. Please do look up their Facebook page for more such pictures. Of course, we never know what great sights nature awaits us with. If we do not explore and challenge ourselves, we will probably be missing out on all such things. So stay with us for this challenge and look at the moon every day. We will together share more beautiful experiences, sights and details about the surface of the moon. But it's a goodbye for now.